for the Cavaliers, how a game as good as this went down as bad as this. And for the Warriors, how a shot as huge as this changes the NBA forever. What is Stephen Curry doing there? I think we might need an around the horn investigation into that. Let's go around the horn. What was that? Is he going for the Squatty Potty endorsement? What is that? It's Around the Horn, <laughs> the show of competitive banter. Here's Tony Rielli. Let's break down the last three minutes of last night. The Cavaliers went from up 6 to 0 of 8 from the field. And the Warriors went 3 of 4 from the field. And the Durant pull up from 27. Okay, I got I to gotta stop focusing on that. Uh, two questions, National Battle, out over the gate. Who and or what on Cleveland is most responsible for the letdown? And who and or what for Golden State is most responsible for that game-winning 11-0 run? Kevin Blackstone, start us off. Poor offensive execution over the last three minutes and an inability to swallow your pride and do what you do best and not try to out-warrior the Warriors. Those shots that you reference right there, Kyle Korver missing a three, okay, that's what he's supposed to do. LeBron James shooting a fadeaway 12-foot jump shot, he should be at the cup. They also missed two layups in that time. Kyrie Irving missed one. Love missed one. They also put up a couple more three-pointers that didn't find the net. And on top of that, they also had the turnover on LeBron on the inbounds play. That is what melted them down and brought them to the point where they are. Give credit to the, to the Warriors. They did what they're supposed to do. <laughs> okay. And by the way, one more thing on LeBron. Mm-hmm. How do you not close out on what is the iconic shot for KD in the NBA, a pull-up three off of a break from about for a somebody who wants yard, to give credit, you like you just said, the- for one second. A lot of blame coming from Kevin Black. You like that? It was blame, 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 credit, blame, blame, blame. Bob Ryan, how about you? Kevin, you know what you need? You need to write one of those letters to your younger self. And <laughs> that there's such in vogue in the Players <laughs> Tribune. And apologize for growing into the cynical, nasty, negative old man. Mm. Uh, because what? you Whoa. Just sit back and enjoy it. It's not always about blame. One team made shots, the other one didn't. I didn't see any bad shots. And by the way, those layups were contested, difficult shots, such as that Irving was making the whole game. By the way, he's putting on a show of driving I've never seen in my whole life. Is and I'm any? enjoying this whole Ooh. thing. You should too and stop worrying about negative 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 Uh, people made positive statements to win the game and when kevin durant is walking that ball up court with a minute to go i'm saying to myself oh my god he's not going to walk into yet another three is he at this biggest moment of the game maybe his career yep he did and he made it so you You knew it was coming or you thought maybe it was coming oh you're applauding it good gene kelly singing in the rain here bob ryan tim kalisha join us We've heard from the older voices. Now let's hear from some of the younger ones. Soon enough. <laughs> Let me just say this. Uh, K- KB is mostly right about some of the things he said, but he left out the biggest thing. So take points away from him if you need to. That's up to you, Tony. Whoa, Thank, Kyrie you. Irving's Thank you very failure, much. Fa- Kyrie Irving's failure to take a shot around the 30, 32. He could even shot around 28. Take, take that shot with that much time left to go. Uh, and then even if you take a bad three and miss, you are not stuck in that foul game that they were because he, he waited way too long. I think he dribbled 12 times on Clay Thompson, finally took up a bad three, and the Warriors got the ball with 25 seconds. At that point, you've got to start fouling Curry and all the guys that you don't want to foul. That's what stuck them. I had no problem with LeBron throwing the ball in the corner to Corver. That's the shot he's there right. to hit. He should okay. hit okay. that shot. But, but Kyrie Irving messed up the timing of the game. And Mina Kimes. I cannot believe KB is going after LeBron. Like Tim said, he was right to kick it out to Kyle. And yeah, he made one mental error against Durant. But we're talking about a game in which during the 144 seconds he was out, his team was outscored by 12. He carried them. And look, they didn't lose this game. The Warriors won this game. Give credit to KB for being clutch, for Steph out-rebounding Tristan Thompson and Clay Thompson for playing lights-out defense at the end. That's why they won. KB back in. Well, I mean, I'm not going after LeBron, but I am going after him on that one particular play. He's got to close out. That is what KD does. You can't allow him to have an uncontested, wide-open three-pointer like that. I mean, he's deadly. So that's my only point with, uh, with him. But I'm glad you mentioned your boy, Tristan Thompson, who once again didn't show up. Bob Ryan, you look gobsmacked. Go ahead. Yeah, I am, because come on, Kevin, you don't, the last thing in the world you want to do is foul a three-point shooter, which is in vogue these days, and if you ever did that, you'd be all over him. Oh, he's so stupid. How can he foul a three-point shooter? But you got to contest it. 
He you know, put his hand Mina up. brought it up. He sat for 144 seconds for the game. LeBron says there were times throughout the game where he was a little bit tired, but they didn't lose this game because they were tired. They lost because they missed shots. Do you buy that, Tim Kalisha? No, I think fatigue was a big factor with, uh, you know, LeBron playing 46 minutes and Kyrie Irving playing 44, and the manner in which they play and they're driving to the hoop all night. I mean, they are more fatigued than the Warriors. Nobody on the Warriors has to play those minutes. Steph Curry got to rest more in the fourth quarter than LeBron did the entire game. That's a luxury the Warriors have with their depth. It definitely hurt, the, I think, the Cavs. So would you say Lou is mismanaging minutes, minutes Tim? No, I don't think they have a choice. I mean, Mina just said uh, you take LeBron out and the team just just goes to hell. Same question to you, Kevin. No, I don't think they were. I don't think they were tired. Look, we all know that the Warriors play at a pace that we've never seen before and do so very effectively. And there are times when you look at that team, especially not this game, the last game where LeBron w went to the bench and he just looked exhausted. But come on, there these are, these are athletes in the prime of their lives. They're not too tired. Bob Ryan. As early as the second period, every time he came off the bench during a, to the bench on a timeout, he looked exhausted. I'm sorry. I think it had to have something to do with it. Times. Yeah, I mean, when Steve Kerr said it was fatigue, he wasn't just trying to be nice. He was being honest. And that was something that he game planned for because he's a terrific coach, and they closed it out. So this is, gets back to a conversation we had in the build-up to this game three, which was two or three days, right? Um, what pace are the Cavaliers going to play? We're going to play our pace. Should we slow it down? No, we're going to play our pace. Well, they played... Their pace and more. They played the Warriors' pace, and it got them in the last minute here. We have to talk about the Durant three a little bit more because to pull up from that space in that moment of the wow. game, uh, look look how long. I, mean, I call that tentacle form, the way he's, he's pulling up there and, and shooting from there. That shot, Paul Pierce said, was a changing of the guard in the NBA from LeBron to KD. Are you going to go that big, Bob Ryan? Uh, no, uh, Paul Pierce should uh, stick to playing and forget about analyzing because the fact of the matter is what separates LeBron with the, this the, the heir apparent mm -hmm. to Larry Bird and Magic Johnson is his passing ability. He's the best passing forward since Bird, one of the two best of all time. It enhances, it enhances everybody else on the floor. And his, and, and his biggest, wildest imagination, Kevin Durant, will never be LeBron James. He'll be Kevin Durant, and that's pretty damn Okay, well, that, that of LeBron course, James. is true what you're saying here, but a changing of the guard doesn't suggest he has supplanted him as the exact same player. It just suggests that this shot, game three in a series, to go up 3-0, and, and now we all presume might be the championship for Durant and championships to come. Mina Kimes, do you believe that shot was a changing of the guard? I don't, because I think the context matters here. Saying KD has you know, supplanted LeBron is like saying Captain America could beat Superman, but Captain America gets to fight with the Avengers. It's just not fair. I mean, look at who's around them. And look, KD has been fantastic this series. LeBron James, still the best basketball player on planet Earth. Tim Kalashaw? There will be a changing of the guard at some point. We know that. LeBron won't be the best forever. But you can't tell me uh, a team with LeBron and Steph Curry and Draymond Green and Klay Thompson wouldn't just be rolling over people in these playoffs. Blackstone. Yeah, you, you can't really say that. I'm surprised that okay. Paul Pierce would say that. Um, okay. You know, LeBron is as close as we've seen in the NBA in a long time as a guy who can take his and then beat yours in and yours in and beat his in. We've seen him do that. Durant All right, so him. last night we saw LeBron. Again, he was asked the question whether – the impossible could happen, whether they can come back. Last year was 3-1, this year it's, it's 3-0. Can the impossible happen with this Cavaliers team, seeing how they played last night? Bob Ryan. I find it just hard to believe that they won't summon themselves to avoid the humiliation of a sweep. I, I just, uh, but that's I all you're giving them—a summons, a summoning of one game. Kevin Blackstone, oh, how yeah. about you? Oh yeah, they'll go back to Cleveland. Uh, I mean, to, to uh, Golden State. Let me summon, summon my inner Plasky. No, it's over. Kalisha. If they were losing games because their best players weren't playing well, you could try to make that argument. That's not the case. Times. Yeah, it's over. They put it all on the court last uh, night, and they still lost. You know, there's video. We were talking about the shot. There's video going around. Washington Post website has it if you want to check it out. Uh, Kevin Durant's dad was playing pickup basketball the day before, two days ago now, uh, game three. And he had a shot from the same exact place that KD did, and he hit it to win his pickup basketball game. How cool is that? Like father, like son. I know what I just did opens the floor for us, the floodgates, for Tim Kalashaw's highlights of his rec games when he was wherever he was. Not um, a lot of footage of that 32-point night. I'm sorry. Okay, so, yeah. Uh, we're going to take a break right here, but before we go, um, here's the tweet. J.R. Smith says he didn't tweet. Cavs in seven. <laughs> I don't know why that's an issue. Even if he did send it, at least he's got the Cavaliers. And then here's Duran from about eight years ago. Cavs comeback question mark still applies, but of course 
He was referencing something else. We're back after this. Buy or sell. Game five. Teams that win it go on to win the series 71% of the time. Knowing game six is in Nashville, where the Predators are 9-1 and one this postseason, are you going to call tonight a must-win for the Penguins, Tim Kalashaw? I think it's very close to that. I, I will stop just short of that because these are the Penguins. They're the defending champions. I don't want to put that on them. But I think what happened the last two games is that Pecorine kind of found his footing. He looks comfortable. He looks fine in the net. He looks like he might be the best goalie in the series moving forward. If that's true, the Penguins don't have a chance. So you're stopping just short of a must win, which just, just sounds like win then. One for- Kevin Blackstone, please. Thank you, Tony. Look, it is not a must win. Why is it not a must win for the Penguins? Because we've seen just recently what they can do on the road when a game seven on the road shut down another series and a game six on the road. Being on the road is not necessarily Bob a problem. I'm selling also. This is an unanalyzable, unpredictable series. Absolutely. I mean, we all know what happened the first two games. Timmy's right about Rennie. Uh, and when is Sydney going to finally act like Sidney Well, Oh, he had the goal last game, but how convenient. A from, goal. From somebody who's here to tell us about the series that you call it unanalyzable. <laughs> go uh, analyze this, Mina Kimes, please. I'm going to go out and say it's a must win. I don't usually believe in home ice advantage, but there is something going on in Nashville. They're 9-1 and one there, and they're clearly hard to beat. Also, they should have taken those first two games. They had beat them in time of possession. They outshot them. The difference was Pecorine, who suddenly looks fantastic again. I do think Pittsburgh does not want to lose this and then go back Who to you got Nashville. tonight, Mina Kimes? Make a pick. I'm going to pick Nashville. Kalashaw? they can do it. Predators 2-1 overtime. Arvid Pittsburgh 4-1. And do we even need to ask Bob Ryan, is it pickable? It's, I know it's, you can't analyze it. Can you pick it? Because you put the proverbial gun to my head, I'll say Pittsburgh. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. That's not, that's not. There's no proverbs. We're not doing anything like that. We'll move on. Buy or sell two. They need a leader. They need a point guard. I feel like I can fill that hole. Alonzo Ball after working out for the Lakers. He also said, I'll go to any team. I just want to do what I do. I play basketball. So, Mina? Buy or sell Lonzo Ball there. I'm buying it because he's right. And the only reason there's drama, by the way, is a few weeks ago, D'Angelo Russell liked a tweet saying the Lakers should not draft him. D'Angelo Russell, no stranger to drama, which is a shame because he would benefit from having Lonzo Ball. He has been better off the ball at shooting guard towards the end of the season. The two of them together might be a nice combination if they can set aside the drama. Dallas Show. I'm going to sell this, even though I like Lonzo Ball. He's saying they need a point guard. They should draft one with the second pick having drafted one with the second pick two years ago. Uh, so, yeah, but I agree. Mean, I think they could both play. Uh, I don't think he needs to call D'Angelo out like that. KB? Well, I'll buy the second part of his statement, which is about he'll go anywhere because he absolutely, absolutely has no leverage. He can't just make him make the Lakers take him. Um, but I'll sell the part about the leader because while they may not have developed one on the court yet, they got a new leader there back in the house. His name is Magic Johnson, and he's making he's going to make those things work. Back to what you said first, though. You don't read his, that comment, I, I'll play anywhere, as being in opposition to maybe what has been out there for the last two months, maybe coming from someone in his family, not exactly. to mention any names, it, saying it, that he would only play for the Lakers. I, right. Don't you think that is a positive thing that he's putting out there? I'll play for anybody. I'll work out. You know? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. that's okay. what I'm saying. I buy that part. Absolutely. And, and, and also, Tim brought up the idea that, you know, he's taking a shot at D'Angelo Russell. Do you believe that that's what is happening here with this first comment, Kevin? Uh, he's taking a shot at everybody on that team okay. if he sees a leadership void and he thinks he can... Bob, can you address both, please? I am buying it because I, I'm not putting stock in the word leader. I think it means point guard that he thinks he can be better than what they have. And I think that I trust his basketball judgment. His on-court decisions are pretty good. I suspect he knows this game very well for a young man. We'll move on. Buy or sell three. David Price on the mound tonight at Yankee Stadium, which now I guess hmm. means the media can talk to him today only because he's not going to talk on non-pitching days going forward as – he essentially says right here in the quote, he's gotten a raw deal. His relationship in Boston with fans also appears raw. Real quick, I want to get points. I'll give them to you guys, but these are for Matt Collins of SB Nation for this summary. This David Price situation is very dumb in every conceivable way. I'm very upset that this is what I'm writing about this morning. <laughs> Bob, this is your account. Have at it. Well, I think that Mr. Price is unduly sensitive. I think the fact is that when you're 0-6, 0-8 with a 6-point-plus ERA in your postseason, 
Uh, you uh, are on the defensive, and, and I think that's at the root of everything here. Frank. So you think this is about like the postseason record? Do you believe he's been giving a, a, a raw deal by no, both I the Boston not. Not media by, and also by Boston by the, fans? Not by print. If you want to talk about talk shows, I can't comment. But okay. I can tell you right now, they're not in print. How about no by way. fans? I mean, do they view him like movie yes. bets? Yes. They view him like they Jackie don't Bradley see Bradley. his number on his back. They see two hundred and whatever the hell million at eleven, the seventeen million. 17, that's what I they see, what and that's the way we're where we are. Whenever this happens, it becomes a referendum on athletes in the media. We saw, you know, with Marshawn Lynch, oh, wow, they're not going to talk to us ever again. And then they do most of the time. I think it's fine if he doesn't want to talk to the media. In fact, it's a more interesting story because Bob is right. It reveals something about his neuroses, neuroses and pathologies, and that is better than any canned quote. Whoa, neuroses and pathologies. Doctor, do you have the degree to make those type of assertions? I don't know about that. Uh, Tim, talk to me about this, all right? He's available to talk one day a week. I mean, how many days do we need to talk to these guys? Well, I'm, yeah, but I'm going to sell it because he's a very engaging, interesting guy to listen to. And I, I think it's a bad move on his part. Also, I, I think, you know, he, the way the Red Sox fans will respond to this will not be that positive. I think they'll see him as a guy who, who's unhappy here, who's, who's grumpy now, even if it's directed toward the media. And uh, that won't help him when he's having a rough night. KB. Well, you know, he's not the first athlete to make his own rules for when he's going to speak to the media or whether he's going to speak to the media at all. Here in Washington, Art Monk never spoke to the media. Uh, I remember when Keith Byers was with Philadelphia, he wouldn't speak to the media after Wednesday. So if he's going to be true to that, uh, that's fine. Just don't waver from it. The one thing I didn't like about this was people suggesting or someone suggesting that he has to stay off of social media. Come on. That's his platform if he wants to use it. And Bob Ryan. There's nothing wrong that a three-hit shutout in, in Yankee Stadium tonight wouldn't cure instantly, right. by the way. Mm -hmm. At least for a few days. He won't be able to talk about it for the next couple, so we won't know. <laughs> Buy yourself four. Do any of you guys want to coach Ohio State? <laughs> Their job is open. Creighton's Greg McDermott saying no today. That's reportedly five no's, I, I think, that people are counting that Ohio State has gotten since that motto was let go. KB? What are you buying and what are you selling here, both from Ohio State's perspective and uh, McDermott's, I guess? Well, I don't buy anything about Ohio State. It is the same, but I give Greg McDermott credit if he wants to stay um, at, at, at Creighton, where he's been for a number of years and has some success there, um, and not take the big money and go to an even brighter stage at Ohio State. Bob Ryan? Well, I'm buying the idea that Greg McDermott is enjoying being the king of a kingdom in Omaha where they are in the top 10 in attendance five years in a row. It's a, he's made them the number one uh, attraction in town. And uh, I think really, I like that a lot. Was Ohio State? I can't tell you. Times. I'm selling the idea that this is about Ohio State. You know, when the news came out yesterday that he was being considered, there was so much criticism of McDermott and his record, and that's probably why. He doesn't want to deal with this. He wants to stay in Omaha, which is by the city way, the city where I was born and is quite lovely. Oh, well, there we go. Kalisha, how about you? You probably uh, know Omaha well. I, I've been to Omaha, though I was born in Tulsa. Thank you very much. Uh, Ohio <laughs> State, you know, has a lot of good programs, <laughs> but it's by and large a football school. And, yeah, you can be you can be successful like that motto was for a while. Can you sustain it? Maybe maybe Mr. McDermott thinks you can't. He's going to stay right where he is. Second most wins in show history. Tim Kalisha has sustained it, but... Huh? Not so sustainable energy today to make it into the showdown. Black is still parting with him. Times, Omaha's finest, and Bob Ryan. The showdown next. Trenton's finest. Trenton's finest. And now, insurance-minded speeches from Geico. Hardship. My grandmother would go through it every month to pay her insurance bill. First, she would handwrite a paper check in cursive. Then, using her own tongue, she would wet a stamp for an envelope. Today, however, we need not weary our hands and tongues. Today, we can pay our GEICO bill with the GEICO app. Away with hardship, in with bill pay on the GEICO app. Thank you. Times and Ryan at Showdown. Showdown 1, it comes from BeerGogglesOn.com and Touchdown Wire. Now that Bob Stoops has retired from Oklahoma, is the NFL bound? And here's the evidence they provide. He just bought a mansion in Chicago. His second mansion in Chicago. Two mansions in Chicago, Mina. Something or nothing? It's nothing. I mean, it'd be one thing if he bought a mansion in Green Bay. Then we might be asking questions, but it doesn't make sense. Also, he's not the type of coach I think the Bears will look for after John Fox. He's too similar to him, defensive-minded. It's a non-story. 
He's long on record as saying he loves Chicago. Favorite spot. So it uh, doesn't shock me. To give him two, well, yeah, everybody needs a guest cottage, right, if you're in that bracket. That, that, uh, <laughs> Those look like row so. homes to me, though. I mean, I, I like the idea. If you're going to knock down the wall in between and, and go, go bigger, go for it. We'll split the point. Showdown two. I think we had a reverse Jeffrey Mayer at Yankee Stadium last night. This Chris Carter moonshot, does it go... Through the fans' hands? Does it get redirected by the fan? These were questions I think the umpires were asking when they conferred. Did this Boogie Betts catch it legally? There was a conference on the field. They never went to video. Bob, what's your ruling here? It was ruled an out, but what's your ruling here? Well, the ruling is it wasn't out, but the fact is they should have gone to video. Why not? What do they have to lose? The Yankees should have demanded it. They, they, maybe they could have gotten something out of it. And the moral of the story is, as long as you see baseball, you never see everything. As someone who covers the NFL, I feel uniquely qualified to say that is a catch. The fan broke the play and he interfered. Mookie <laughs> came down with it. It was absolutely an out. The slump is over. Mina Kime is into FaceTime. Uh, I'd like to dedicate this to my Uber driver, Armando, who predicted my victory today by telling the story of mm. Sharice Wright, you know, the, the Buffalo player who took the uh, long Uber all the way from Chicago to Buffalo. It turns out his driver... Uh, Hadi Abdullahian, a Turkish immigrant, thought he wanted to go to a Buffalo Wild Wings. But he took them all the way anyways, and they ended up becoming best friends. It's a heartwarming story on National Best Friends Day. Yes. I love it. All right. Win number three. Um, you know, I want to tell a story real quick, because now it's on the internet. In the, in the time we've been doing the show, we put it on the internet. Look at the shirt that Mina Kimes is wearing today. That color she is wearing is known as green screen green. And you may not know this, but her backdrop happens to be green screen for us. So when she showed up to work today, she was actually just a floating head. Mina, you are a never nude in life. You were a, a, a never, you were in a floating green screen. You are now a better nude at this point, right? Is that what we're calling it? Lucky. We'll see you tomorrow.